Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and I am once again joined remotely by Jordan Drake. Hi, Jordan. Hey, Chris. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. I, I'm happy to say that the COVID thing is all done, and I'm not 100%, but I'm getting there, but I'm not contagious, and I can't wait to get outside. And I wish we were outside today. We were supposed to be, but we're still doing this remotely because it's minus 30 degrees outside. Doesn't matter, Fahrenheit Celsius, really. I mean, it's, it's like- It's hell either way. But it works for this video today because what we're gonna talk about today I think is a pretty interesting topic. We normally compare full frame cameras against other full frame cameras, APS-C against APS-C, but today we're gonna do something a bit different, hey? We're gonna do the Fuji X-T4 versus the Sony a7 III. And why are we doing that? Like you mentioned, we usually compare the same sensor sizes and prices to everything, but you might wanna be comparing two different formats and find out, you know, if you have a smaller, less expensive sensor, does that mean you get more in terms of other features? So we're gonna run through that today. For now, sure. I should also mention that there is the A7C that's at a similar price, but I figured for our audience, and especially if you're comparing it to the Fujifilm X-T4, you're probably looking more at the A7 III, just a few more external controls on it, a bit more enthusiast-oriented camera. Sure. Yeah, we should mention that like, you know, although the X-T4 is quite a bit of a newer camera than the a7 III, they're both still on the market and they're pretty close in price. So I think this will be an interesting comparison. So we're gonna have a little bit of a back and forth, you and I, and I'm gonna play uh, the X-T4, uh, the, the, the protagonist of the X-T4, and you're going to uh, defend Apparently your, this uh, is the antagonist? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. but uh, I, I am gonna tell you why the a7 III might be a better use of your money. All right, well, let's get right into it, Jordan. Let's get into handling. That's how we usually like to start. And honestly, I mean, uh, the X-T4 has beautiful control dials. Uh, you know, I, everybody loves the fact that you can use it in more of a classic approach if you want to. I like the overall feel, lots of customizable buttons. Yeah, uh, I, you know, it's, it's a small body. I'll give it that. It's certainly quite light, especially for a full frame. But uh, I know I'm supposed to be defending this. I'm not crazy about the feel of this camera. It does have a bigger grip. Uh, so if you like that, a little chunkier grip, that's great. But it's pretty close to the lens mount. So it really only feels great if you're using it with smaller lenses. I mean, come on. I mean, if you're talking larger grip, I mean, relatively speaking, yes, it does, but it's, it's a very still low bar to cross. <laughs> it's a pathetically small grip. I should also mention, I mean, you know, although both cameras are officially weather sealed, I do think the X-T4 has a more robust body design. I mean, there have been issues with A7 III's, especially just through the bottom parts of the camera. I wouldn't worry about it in a light rain, but overall, I think the X-T4 is gonna be what I'd, I'd more reliably trust in dust or inclement weather situations. I will give you that. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so let's talk about displays next. And Wait, we can are, see... now are you sure you want to do this, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> this has a nice little EVF hump on it, and the optics are actually pretty good in this. Uh, it might not be the highest resolution display, but I certainly don't mind shooting with the a7 III at all. Okay, sure, but we are talking about 2.36 million dot EVF versus yes. my 3.69 million dot EVF. And the back panel, I mean, I get the fully articulating back panel, which everybody now knows we are both proponents of. So if you're gonna go ahead and say that you like the Sony better, well, then we know that you're just lying. I have no defense on that front either. <laughs> So far, the X-T4 is not, doing not a great good. start, frankly. <laughs> All right, Jordan, our next topic of conversation is autofocus. And you have to admit, yes. Fujifilm has done a lot to get better autofocusing in their cameras. And the X-T4 is really the pinnacle. I mean, their face detect is accurate. It works at longer distances than it used to. They do have a good tracking autofocus and the implementation to get that set up is very easy to use. So overall, I've got a very intuitive camera that autofocuses reliably. The Sony, it's an older camera, the a7 III. So the interface isn't my favorite on this. It does still have tracking and it does have outstanding face and eye detection on this camera. So I would say our hit rate was actually higher with the a7 III, even though the shooting experience isn't quite as good. And that's the most important thing. Now, the other thing I should mention is if you don't need the slightly larger body with a few more controls on it, that a7C I mentioned before has Sony's real-time tracking implementation that will just wipe the floor with your Fuji. <laughs> yeah, I will give you that. The a7C would be a way better choice as far as autofocus goes. Honestly though, other than the face and eye detect, I would give the tracking autofocus to the Fuji X-T4 over the Sony a7 III. Madness, but I mean, I guess we gotta argue in this thing, right? <laughs> 
All right, next up is image quality, and I want to take a little bit of time because this is where I clearly have an advantage. Look at that. Look at that big old full frame sensor in there. This is really the major advantage of the Sony camera, and it does pay huge dividends in a number of situations. If you're shooting a lot in low light, if you look at the studio test scene from DP Review, you can see at the same ISO values, my images are cleaner, they are sharper. Okay. As well, and, and I'm, not, I'm not done yet, because also <laughs> if you process those raw files, the Sony has more information in the shadows. So if you're a landscape shooter and you're shooting in high contrast situations, again, you're getting an image quality advantage with that full frame sensor. And that's the reason that you should spend the premium on this. Okay, but in defense of the Fuji X-T4, uh, first off, this 26 megapixel sensor gives me a slight resolution advantage over your like. sensor. Uh, yeah, it's there. But more importantly, we both agree that this is one of the best APS-C sensors on the market. ISO performance, dynamic range, it's still no slouch here. I mean, if you're winning, you're winning by fairly small margins. And I hate to go here, Jordan, I hate to do this, but in defense of the X-T4, I've got beautiful JPEG quality out of here. I've got great Fuji film, uh, film simulation modes. And honestly, the a7 III is still one of the older cameras where a lot of people just crap all over its color science. That is definitely a factor if you're shooting JPEG. Now, this is a fairly modern Sony, so it's not that far behind. But certainly, this, I would say, has more advantages if you're looking to process the RAW files. If you're doing straight out-of-camera JPEGs, then there's a little less of an advantage here. Okay, but sensor technology isn't just about image quality, Jordan, as we've talked about recently. It's also other benefits like the readout speed, and the X-T4 sensor has faster readout speed. That means less rolling shutter, uh, which is great for video, but also means I can rely on the electronic shutter a little bit more. And although both cameras have pretty similar mechanical shutter speed burst rates, I can push 30 frames per second with mine in electronic shutter mode, and it's still quite usable, and you can't touch that. I can't touch that, but remember, for that 30 frames, you are cropping the sensor a little bit in order to do it, which does degrade your image quality a little bit, yeah. still giving me a leg up in image quality. 30 is a big number. 30 is just a big number. I'm throwing a big 30 at you. Take it. Mine wins. Okay, but now it's time to talk about video, and I bet you wish the roles were reversed because the Fuji destroys you, man. I mean, it's, it's just a sign of the newer design, better processing. I get 4K 60, you can't touch that. I get 1080 to 40, 10 bit internal. I get that Eterna profile, which I know you love. Sony has nothing that can touch that. Uh, I mean, I can shoot flat profiles on this camera. The video features here are fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you most of those, but I do still feel like Fujifilm has a video-centric body coming out, because your camera doesn't even have a headphone jack. It has an adapter that comes with it, so I can use headphones. Does your camera have a tally lamp? Because mine does, and that's infinitely useful. My camera useful. doesn't have a tally lamp. <laughs> Yeah, but keep in mind, Jordan, your camera also overheats. It's been known to yeah, do it. They both overheat, but I'm hearing a lot more reports about an X-T4 overheating. I haven't experienced it because we live in Canada, and that's not a big concern with either <laughs> yeah, of these guys. It overheats because I can do 4K 60. Your camera can't even touch that. Let's, let's call that a draw. I see no reason that uh, we need to pick a winner for that. The other thing... Video autofocus. Now, I don't love the interface on the a7 III for video autofocus, but you can't argue with the results on it. Uh, Fujifilm's video autofocus has improved, but I still find it's occasionally like jumping a little bit. Uh, it's just a little bit consistent. Doesn't seem as confident as what Sony's doing here. The Fujifilm is a better overall video package, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll give you that. Bastard. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna jump right back when it comes down to lens selection. You might be wondering, hey, why has that guy got a third-party Tamron lens on his a7 III? It's because I have a lot of third-party lens options, Chris. I've got lenses <laughs> from Tamron. I've got lenses from Sigma. I've got autofocus lenses coming from all the third-party manufacturers. Fujifilm seems to be a lot more restrictive with this mount, and you just, frankly, don't have as many options as no, I No, no, hang on. Okay, I will give you the fact that you have great third-party options, but it's nothing to do with the lens mount. It's because Fujifilm film has probably the most extensive line of APS-C lenses for their camera systems and all the other manufacturers are like the prices are decent we just can't touch it I mean Fuji has great options compact options weather resistant options covering pretty much every focal length and I've got lots of fast lens options too let me stop you and talk to my Boca fans out there Chris because if you're obsessed with shallow depth of field you'll generally find yourself paying a lot less money for comparable depth of field on a full frame sensor. 
uh, that's consistent across almost all focal lengths. So if you really want that full frame, super shallow depth of field, look, yes, you can get it on the Fujifilm with things like the 50 millimeter F1.0, but you're gonna wind up paying a lot less money if you're looking for that look on a full frame camera. Whatever, I'll give it to you, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Now let's come to a very important topic, Jordan. That is how beautiful the camera is, the aesthetics, I didn't the, have the that one sexiness. Down. Yeah, I know, this is an important topic because honestly, a camera is supposed to be something that you enjoy using. And the Fujifilm X-T4, you are gonna covet this camera. You're gonna want to use it. It's a great user interface. It's a great experience. It turns head. I got you beat dead to rights on the sexiness of this camera being so much nicer than a Sony a7 III. Nobody's ever looked at a Sony a7 III and been like, damn, I need to own that camera and show it off to everybody. Well, that's because people are showing these off wrong. They're walking around with it like this. What they should be doing is going to the bar and being like, hey, hey, look at my camera. Look at this sexy, beautiful, lustrous, full frame sensor that's in there. That's how so, you should do it. So the, no, the <laughs> beauty of mine is on the inside, which is truly the most transcendent beauty of all. Right, and it's completely based on just like overcompensating on this bigger is better, look at how much bigger mine is than yours, kind of, you know, really ridiculous, childish and immature approach. I got you, no, I got you, yeah, I got you. We'll, just, we'll let the viewers decide. One more example of beauty being on the inside is this lovely Sony Z-type battery. I mean, we rave about these things all the time. It's so small, but it runs it for so long. <laughs> okay, I have to give it to you because I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. I have said many times how the Z battery is fantastic. But the Fujifilm X-T4 does now have the brand new NPW 235. This is much improved as well, Jordan. And uh, it's even so good that they're using it in the latest GFX 100S to power that beast of a camera, which by the way, has a bigger sensor than yours. I'm just going down to your level on that one there. And look at that, double bumps, Jordan. Everybody loves double bumps. I love double bumps, I prefer them. And my battery has it, and your battery is just square and boring. All right, I think we should talk about IBIS, in-body image stabilization, not Egyptian gods, that's totally different. IBIS, very important in a camera. And the Fujifilm X-T4 has their best IBIS system. It is very effective. This has steadily improved over the years as well. And uh, honestly, Jordan, Sony's IBIS, although present, isn't really anything to write home about. Yeah, it certainly helps when you've got like a more static shot. In photography, it will help you out a little bit. When I find I really struggle with this guy is in video, it just doesn't stabilize the image too much. But I, you don't have too much to brag there because the X-T4, I still find it kind of gets hung up when you're trying to do a deliberate pan or walk with the camera in some situations. Yeah, but that's for video, which nobody cares about for photography. The Fujifilm X-T4 wins, man. Ibis you seem to care it. about video when you won the video category. Yeah, that's because it's got better stats than your camera. I, don't worry, never mind. It's, okay, I, fine. I, I'll, I win. I'll, I'll, I win. I'll give you Ibis as well. Yes, all you right. will. All right, Jordan. Well, it looks like the Fujifilm X-T4 has won pretty much all the categories that matter. It's more beautiful. The image quality is still fantastic. It autofocuses well. The video is better. I mean, really, the fact of the matter is, I think I destroyed you on this one. I completely disagree. Yes, you won in most categories, and that makes sense, because you're going to get, in exchange for the smaller sensor, things like premium build and things like that. But remember, you have the top of the line if you're shooting in an XF mount, where there's still tons of room to grow if you spend that same amount of time and get into a Sony full frame. There's the R series cameras, the S series cameras. If you're into video, you have something like the A1 with an incredible electronic shutter. There's still plenty of room to go if you jump into a full frame system where I know a lot of people who have invested in APS-C and then eventually decide to move up to full frame later. I, I've got you beat, just admit defeat, all right? Uh, at this price no. point, I think this is a way more full featured kit, Jordan. Well, we'll leave it to the people to discuss in the comments below. I'm sure there will be plenty of opinions about this. Uh, Fujifilm and Sony shooters are both known for their passion. Let's say passion. All right, well, we'll leave it at that and uh, let the viewers decide. Uh, I do want to mention tomorrow is Valentine's Day. That's one day left, not only to get your Valentine's stuff taken <laughs> care of, um, yeah, seriously, but also uh, if we can get to that 300,000 subscriber limit, that's the cutoff and Jordan will have to use a Pentax K01 for the next month, four episodes. I really want to see that happen. That's what I want for Valentine's Day. 
I also want to mention if you want a little more information on these cameras, there's full reviews of the X-T4 and the Sony a7 III available on dpreview.com and sample galleries as well. So be sure to check out the link in the description below to find out more about these great cameras. All right, well, Jordan, I soundly defeated you today. Uh, no. And I, I don't think no. I, a better person could have deserved it. So uh, anyways, thanks so much for joining us here. And uh, thank you guys for watching our videos as always. We will see you all very soon.